You never know when you're gonna get a PR. One more. That's it. Push. You're going to suck the first time that you try something. You don't want to be adding reps to every single exercise. I don't want this floating around because so this would be doing this. Woo! As soon as I finish that set, I'm gonna show you what I eat for my post-workout meal. What's up, family? So today we're trying a new format. I'm just gonna be showing you my workout, what I'm gonna be doing today. We're gonna be actually showing the real work. No cuts, I mean, minimal cuts, minimal edits. So you're gonna be able to see my entire workouts. And I'm just gonna be speaking in the middle of the sets, any insights that I get, any modifications that I do. So again, you guys can see how I actually train and how we actually train here without that much fanciness around. So today we got front lever, we got four exercises, one, two, three, four, five. Four of the, those exercises are for front lever and, and for pull. We got 12 sets for front lever and then the last one is going to be back to all hands and push-up. In this season I decided to just put planche to the side and just focus on warm hands and front lever because warm hands and front lever and planche wasn't working. Every time I added another skill like training three skills, my progress always starts to decline. So I'm just sticking to two. I put planche, which is my favorite skill, my big love skill. I just put it to the back burner for now. So I'm doing around 30 to 40 pulling sets a week. Just get the front lever out of the way, which has been my nemesis for so long, and just get a consistent one hand stand of five to 10 seconds, and then I can retake the planche. So whichever skill comes first, then I go. Today is only front lever. If you guys want to see my one on hands and sessions or another front lever session, let me know down below. I also do some scapula work. If you want that one as well, let me know down below. But again, those are the three areas that I'm working on. So don't ask me for a planche workout right now because I'm not training planche. Let's get to the warm up. For the warm up, I keep it pretty simple. I just do, I don't even time it, I just do some jumping jacks and high knees. That's the two exercises that I enjoy to get my heart rate up. And then I just do around five minutes of just mobilizing every joint of my body, my neck, my shoulders, my knees, and everything around. So after the general warm-up, I do some activation drills, which are simply warming up. Uh, the muscles that I'm gonna be using. I like to do a whole body hold because it really resembles what we're gonna be doing at front lever. Then after that, I just do a few basics, way, way, way away from, from failure. If I were to do just regular weight training and weight lifting, you would probably just wanna do a general warm up and just go straight into the exercise that you wanna do and just do lighter weight in there. When it comes to skill training, we're pretty much doing the same. Like rows, it's a lighter load than a front lever. Then I might do a advanced tuck front lever before I actually go into my working sets. So, let's get it. If you're doing rotating rows, make sure that you don't rotate like right here, meaning right at the beginning of the movement. Because if not, you're simply just switching grips and then not doing really anything. When you're doing rotating, you wanna focus on every grip at a time. So you or in a pronated grip, once you're at 90 is when you rotate and you finish on supination, then you don't rotate here. You keep that supination and then at 90, then you rotate. There is, the, there is a difference between this, I'm working on every single grip properly, instead of just rotating, 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 rotating. For that, you might as well just do prone grip or supinated grip. Push-ups. But Gabo, it's a pulling workout. Why are you doing push-ups? Why are you working out and warming up your chest? I don't know, it works. Try it out. First set, so the first exercise is gonna be max isometric hold. I do not have a front lever, even though some thumbnails might have a picture of me doing a front lever. 
I had one in the past, but I don't have a front lever. I have a very instable scapula, which prevents me a lot from movements like flange and front lever. And also, I mean, the biggest reason I think why I haven't gotten the front lever is because I've been trying to focus on way too many goals at a time. I've been doing this programming for only four weeks, which is specific to the front lever and only, and only combine it with the one on Hansen. And I've seen results like never before. I should expect to have a front lever in like two or three months. We'll see if that's happening. Shout out to my coach, which is Francisco Rossi. So I always film my sets. Film your sets. It's a great idea. I'm shooting for four to six seconds, so very intense set. And I'm using a red band, and I've been reducing the tension as the mesocycle goes by. This is week four. Normally I would deload on this week, but since vacation is approaching, I'm just prolonging the accumulation phase so I can relax on Christmas and New Year's. But fatigue is very, very high, so I don't expect a huge PR days on every session. To measure the tension, I just, I'm doing one finger, and then that's where I put the band, I grab it. There are several ways to do it. This is just working for me right now. I get it very low, almost into my sacrum. And let's see, see how the first full lever hole of the day goes. I feel a bit that I wasn't retracted enough. You don't want a full retraction in front lever, but you want some activation there. I feel a bit sinking, but it definitely felt stronger than last week. So talking about PRs, I got a PR. You never know when you're gonna get a PR. If I stop it right there, I definitely can retract slightly more. And I'm also doing too much shoulder extension. So when you go here, the front lever will basically rise up and you're not in a full horizontal position, which not only doesn't look as good, but it's also easier. Like the difference between being here to being here is a huge difference. So what I mean by shoulder extension or excessive shoulder extension is I was around here, which makes against the front lever to rise. What I'm looking forward on the next set is gonna be to just release a bit more, just allow my body to drop. At the same time, I'm just retracting it slightly more, not full retraction again, but just enough to give more activation and it should make it better. So based on the last workout, we use this tension for the first set. We can call that a top set. And I'm gonna have two back off sets with a bit higher tension. So I'm gonna be doing a full hand of tension. So now I'm gonna be grabbing it from here and just try to focus a bit more on form. Now that fatigue is starting to accumulate, even though it's just one set, but it's a max effort set, then it's a good idea sometimes to do top set and down sets. Not for all the exercises, it will vary, but for this one I'm applying this method. But let's see, second set. <sighs> Could have held it one second longer, but I definitely feel way more straight. I'm gonna check now in the video. So first of all, I held it seven seconds, so one second longer than the other one. I felt more comfortable and definitely the shape that I would like for my front lever. You can clearly see the extra re retraction there. So the next one I'm gonna be using the same tension and that's it, now to rest for five minutes. You guys let me know if this is clean or not. <sighs> clean enough, Lionel? That was clean. Adelante, que es bastante lento. Uno, dos, un, dos, tres. Okay, good. Second exercise is going to be front lever races. I'm gonna be doing again top set and down set. The top set is gonna be in full and the drop set is going to be in straddle. Normally when I do front lever races or when I used to do it before, I would do it very, very slow in advanced stock. That's a progression that I can actually manage. I cannot do a full front lever race in a full position. So I just want you to go up, try to kind of hold it for like half a second and then just come down. The front lever is a combination of like shoulder extension, which the lat is the muscle that does that combined with a small amount of retraction just to create that stability which is done by your middle trap and by your rhomboids my biggest weakness is going to be my scapular retractors i think i got enough lat strength too so let's see how the first one goes
Ah. Oof. Can you do one? Can you do one for the, for the people? Can you do one and hold it? This motherfucker goes right here. Boom. Oh man. Oh man. Nice. Nice. All right, set number two, as I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for straddle. Now the goal with the straddle is just to reduce the intensity enough so I can actually pull more with my retractors rather than just pulling from my lats. So I'm gonna put the camera right here so you guys can actually see if I'm retracting enough or not. All your front lever masters, please let me know in the comment section. So if you, if you get to see the first rep with like the last rep, you're gonna be seeing how the first rep, I'm more from a neutral position because again, it's not full retraction, it's neutral, neutral scapula. And as I get more fatigue, then I start like just collapsing inward. And again, just using my lats to go. Uh, five minute break and let's go for the last set. Normally we don't go to failure, but again, before to last week, just giving all my all I got. All right, so next one is gonna be tuck front lever pull-ups on rings. On Mondays I have tuck front lever pull-ups on, on the bar in advanced tuck. Here is full tuck just to add a little bit extra range of motion. And again, the focus will be to add in a little bit of re retraction as I reach the top, and then really keeping that scapula stability as I go to the bottom. Uh, it's a very weak movement for me, like horizontal pulling in general is weak for me, but horizontal pulling tends to be really, really weak for me. And I have the tendency as I pull to like round the spine to compensate. That's a very natural compensation if you're weak on pulling. And just the same when you're on pushing, we tend to arch to compensate, whether that is push-ups or hands and push-ups. On pull-ups, we tend to round, and on rows, we tend to round. The goal is eight reps with a two second mini hole at the top, which I like to be a bit optimistic and I just do like a optimistic nut, enthusiast, and do like a four second hole at the top. Let's go. The next one is gonna be, is the last one for pulling. It's gonna be just regular rows with false grip and a final touch at the top of five seconds. I'm gonna go for around seven to eight reps, depending on how I feel, and then a three to five second hole at the top. Now the rowing variation is one that I've started doing like three or four weeks ago. Uh, I've never done it before that. It's super, super fucking weird. It's putting my legs like on that deep bar. And in order to go up horizontally, like I need to like use my hamstrings to just go all the way up. I just rather put a box on top. So the box will have to be like on top and I will have to do this. I don't like the variation yet, but I'm open to new ideas and an advice that I can give is just, I've been doing rolls for like forever in a certain way. I've never done it in this way. And obviously you're going to suck the first time that you try something, but maybe you should do it for a bit longer and see if you actually reap the benefits. But let's see how we do today. All right, it felt better than last week. Still weird, but I'll give it a chance. All right, so by looking at the video, it really sucked. <laughs> like I'm still bringing my chest up and in order to bring my hips up, I just need to engage more my glutes and my hamstrings, but I'm not able to like find that top position with my hips up. Let's see if I can make it on the second set, but that first set, just by looking at the phone, it completely sucks. I think that was better.
All right, so it was better, but not. <laughs> I'm gonna have to try now to anteriorly tilt my pelvis a bit. That's also gonna extend my upper spine. So I think that's what's happening. I'm just, I'm a very PPT guy. Like I'm naturally in this position and it's very easy for me to enter into that position. It's very hard for me to arch. I'm not saying that you need to arch for the front lever or anything. That's a whole different discussion. But for this exercise in particular, if I arch my, my spine, I think I'm gonna be able to go into a more horizontal pattern up and down rather than if I'm flexing, my spine want, would want to compensate, my ab would want to take over and just create this weird motion. So let's see if the anterior pelvic tilt fixes it. And also both anterior pelvic tilt and also extending my upper spine. Those are the two things I wanna be focusing right now. Let's see if that actually does something. So weird. So I don't think it was a day to actually understand the exercise, but that's okay. And that's why we should pay attention to technique on any particular exercise before we add load, before we make it harder. I mean, this is a different exercise, but let's say you're working on your pull-ups and you go your first pull-up and then you build it up to eight and then you start adding weight. Just make sure that those eight are really solid before you start adding intensity. Because when you add intensity, everything begins to go out of whack. If I'm not able to perform this body weight, and I just try to put a weight belt and try to do it with weight belt, uh, with weight, uh, it's gonna suck even more. Hello family, last exercise, back to all hands and push-ups. Let's go through the whole setup, two boxes, a weight belt, a plate, let's do the whole thing. <laughs> sucks. If you're doing back to all hands and push-ups or chest to wall or whatever on the wall, it sucks. It reduces the friction. So high setup for this exercise, weight vest, pretty tight. And for the chain, this doesn't fit, so I take it out. Then I'll put it through, do the other side. I do one side, and then to keep it very tight, so I don't, I don't want this floating around because I'm gonna be upside down, so this would be doing this. Woo! And I don't like that, so I'll put it very close. And I just choose the one I got have it here. And then I just double clip it on here, and also clip it on here. And that's how I set it up for my back to all hands and push-ups. I'm gonna be doing either two sets or three sets. If I go very, very hard, I'm gonna keep it at two sets just to minimize fatigue. If I feel like I just wanna leave some reps in reserve, so this is a time where I go more intuitive base than just planning. So I either do two sets hardcore or three sets not so hardcore. But I'm doing a top set with five pounds and then I'm, the drop sets or the backup sets are going to be, it's not a drop set, it's a backup set are going to be with body weight. I'm aiming, I did seven reps last week, so at least I'm getting seven. Again, I'm just doing one exercise on Thursday today, back to all hands and push-ups, and one exercise on Monday, which is weighted dips. So it's only six sets of push that I'm doing a week just to maintain my pushing strength uh, because I'm focusing mainly on pulling and around 10 hours of one-arm handstand work. Let's get seven at the very least. Fabian, count, me for, count for me, please. Let's go, Gabo. Let's get fucking eight. Come on. You got this. Let's go. Let's go. That's one. One more. One more. That's it. Push. Push. Yes. <laughs> So I say it was not a PR day, but apparently it's a PR day. Probably because we're filming. Back to wall. So I was planning to do three sets. Uh, I'm not doing three sets, I'm doing two. That was way too intense. The first one was plus five pounds, and I got eight, and I write here PR, because it was, a, it was an actual PR. And then here is gonna be body weight, and I'm gonna be going for RER zero, which is gonna be max. Am I ready? No, one more minute. <laughs> All right, last set. Last week I went for 10, so I'm gonna go for everything I got, ideally 10. If I can get to 11, that would be fucking amazing. And after that, it's time to eat. As soon as I finish that set, I'm gonna be eating. I'm gonna show you what I eat for my post-workout meal. Let's get it. Fabian, motivate the fuck out of me. Let's go. Let's go, Gabo! You got this, bro. Come on. One, two, three, four, five. 
Six. Let's go, let's go. Last one. Eight. Let's go. Nine. Uno mas. Uno mas. Yes, sir. No. <laughs> Ooh. All right, at least I matched the reps from last week and I did one more rep on the weighted, so that's progress. But I shouldn't be even adding reps here because my goal is to maintain. You don't wanna be adding reps to every single exercise. You don't wanna be adding weight to every single exercise. There are some exercises and attributes to maintain and there are other ones that you wanna increase. So don't be an idiot like I just did. <laughs> Let's go eat. I'm gonna actually have to warm up, warm this up, but we're just sitting here just to show you. We got ground beef that also has organs, and this is fish and rice. I'm gonna combine that with two eggs, and the other two eggs are Karina, and then I'm gonna be eating a banana and a kiwi. This is my second meal, post-workout. If you guys wanna see a full day of eating, let us know down below, because this is a training vlog, not a eating vlog, but who doesn't wanna know what somebody eats after training? So, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this type of video, please let us know down below. We're gonna try to keep it as simple, as raw as possible, so we can produce more content and just make it more of a, I'm not gonna say a daily basis, but maybe a weekly basis. But for that to happen, you really have to smash that like button, give us, leave us a comment, so we know that you actually enjoy this type of content. Maybe let us know if you want it longer with less cuts. Let us know if you want it a little bit shorter. Let us know if you wanted to add music or something. But ideally, again, we want to keep it as raw as possible. Thank you guys so much for your support. We're just trying things out and experimenting. That's, I think that's what life is all about. So go out there and try something new today. Peace out.